Okay, so we'll call the uh, Conway Grammar School Committee meeting to order at uh, 6.06 .06 p.m. today on Thursday, January 18th. Um, first order of business would be approval of minutes. Mm -hmm. here. Okay. A motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. There we go. Um, oh, oh, oh. oh, thank you very much. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thank you for having my back. Keep me void. Um, the next order of business should we move on to people that are here so they could present and move on with their evening or um jill barnes and gail fair thank uh, you uh fourth grade teacher fourth grade ia they're just here for the meeting gotcha yeah okay thank you though for that all right uh should we move on to uh, financial statements sure i did email you your reports mm -hmm. um you do have eight warrants to sign tonight that total $47,350.94. Um, going through the um, the actual report, we do have some overages and some underages, um, and we're about $1,121 short right now, but I'm not concerned because there's always lines that we don't spend in, um, and once we get to the heating season, there could be a couple dollars left there. So. As long as we're not total, uh, you don't see a lot going over in each of the total buckets, um, I think we're doing fine right now. Okay. Be nice if there's some left over after this heating season. Oh, out there. We've used all our wood at my house. <laughs> um, okay. Mm -hmm. Should we? I think the report. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my report is brief because I knew that we would be talking about the budget tonight. But um, we were uh, okay. We were lucky enough to um, have national expert Kathy Fosno. She's a uh, expert in the area of. Math, teaching math, come into our second grade for a week last week. She was piloting a program um, and she used our second grade to do it, so it was great. Many of us were able to see her teaching and learn some things. And um, her team consisted of two other gentlemen from the Netherlands, and they've been working together for over 30 years. We actually used quite a bit of Kathy's um, material throughout the grade, so that was great. Um, we had a successful lockdown drill on Tuesday. Um, we're prepared for MCAS, which is coming up in March and April, hopefully getting a uh, schedule out for parents soon. I just wanted to let the committee know that um, Mary Galusa, who's our new food, uh, our, our food service director, really is wonderful. She's very much about the kids, and she's been um, a real nice addition to our team. And she's doing many different things, but one of the things I just wanted to talk about was um, she does this favorite meal of the month. So each grade level votes on, they're giving, given like six choices, and they vote on their favorite meal, and then in the menu it goes down as fifth grade's choice, and the kids get excited about it. Um, but she's been um, very collaborative. She's been working with Jeannie and with me, and she's... Um, Right now, we've been going over monthly numbers, and right now we are in the positive. So that not for school lunch payments, we're much better than we were last year at this time, and I credit a lot of that to actually the uh, Meals Plus system, the computerized system that we have. Um, we're, get, we're taking the NWEA this month, so next month I'll have some data for you in terms of how our kiddos are doing in math and ELA. Um, and then I just want to talk a little bit about the pipes. I'm sorry I didn't include this on here, Lynn reminded me. So we had some big issues um, over the past couple weeks with the pipe in our preschool room uh, froze and, and then burst. And Bob, actually, were you here when, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, they found after the pipe evidently had frozen 
week or two prior to the leak. And once it started on thaw and the weather warmed up a little bit, that's when it ruptured. Uh, it had, the, according to the janitor, they had problems before and, and, and thought they fixed it and they came and worked on it that day of the yes. rupture. But it wasn't in the unit itself. It was in a pipe that was put in the outside wall at the building, building time the building was constructed. And it goes right in the side of the wall, right in front of that outdoor air vent. The face is due west where the wind blows in there at 90 miles an hour. It's hard and to see that, that froze solid, I guess, that linked the pipe, and it finally unthought enough and it blew open. Mm -hmm. So when we got we got the call because the fire alarm system went off. We come down in the whole classroom was just a fog. That was in the evening. And there was antifreeze all over the floor. Because they put antifreeze in the pipes. To, from freezing and uh, evidently this was pipe probably was frozen prior to them putting the antifreeze in it and they never realized it so the antifreeze didn't work itself into that section of the pipe because it was frozen and they didn't know that then like I said they didn't even know that piece of pipe existed so after the rupture they had to literally tear it apart and found that open the wall up and found this piece. so our firemen isolated the system when we were here uh, just so if the thermostats called for heating, well, it wouldn't continue pumping it out into, into the classroom. So, uh, and I understand they came and fixed it the next morning. Yeah, we had to cancel preschool for three days because the first time um, they had to take the whole unit, unit out and they had to put it repair it so we had to cancel the preschool for three days and then we thought we were in good shape and then mm -hmm. i got a call that evening uh, that the pipe that you really couldn't even see right no, they had, had no that. idea it was ever there right right so um i think we're up and running so well i have a couple questions about that so the first is um about how much of a unexpected in repairs um, cost is that i just put a bolo on my note my financial report to be on the lookout for Jamron bills for the pipe. We won't have the bills yet. If this if this just happened, we will not have the invoices yet. I understand it was thousand it was several thousand dollars worth of antifreeze alone. Fifty gallons of antifreeze? It pretty well dumped the system. <clears throat> so what it did is it not only blew only a portion of it came into the classroom. The biggest amount of the antifreeze leak was outdoors. It went out to the outside, matter of fact the snow was melting six eight feet around the building out there and it was just solid red thank god it's non-toxic antifreeze yeah it's non-toxic so i guess the next question is sort of um whose responsibility right. is it to know that such a yeah. pipe exists and that when you hook up antifreeze to the thing that because of this pipe it's a booby trap waiting to happen good question though and then bruce and i have been talking a lot about that it's um i i will say that jamrock has been responded to our they're they're exceptional i mean if we need something they're busy too but they, they've been really great to us but there lies the question right phil do we well it's an insurance claim we, wouldn't we, it? You know, what, what who pays for that we've gone that antifreeze that's gone you know um what's well, our deductible i'll call the town and check on that was there any damage to classroom materials no uh, uh i will tell you Kudos to Bruce. He was here, you know, for as many hours as he needed to be, and um, got it all. He cleaned it up, and and it's non toxic, so that was great. And, um, but it's also a loss of revenue because business is closed, right? Right. So what do you get? Preschools to pay for. Preschool right. Yeah. Right. Well, we lost so three, days. three days. So, so I guess rather than whose fault is it? I guess maybe the. Um, easier question for us to work on is sort of how do you preserve institutional knowledge like this? Yeah. A and uh, I mean, who's yeah. responsible? Somebody, did, you There's know. There's nobody here now except for Bob um, <laughs> when this building was built. There's nobody here. It was no, not ever documented anywhere that pipe was even there. Mm -hmm. you, you know, from the get go, the, the, the building had a lot of design flaws from the get go. You know, this is. Only, the building's only 30 years old and there's three roofs on it. And you know, so everything's suspect. You know that. So is it a pipe that, a drainage pipe, a water pipe, a sewage pipe, pipe heating pipe? 
Yeah, but it's true. Could Jerry Mark couldn't have seen it. Bob didn't know it was. Bruce didn't know it was. Yes, but that's a good question, Phil. Like, how do we then move forward, make sure we document where the fight, right? Because it's still not Bruce's position to know. Right. It's not, uh, I mean. No, it's Bob but, Lesko's. He's in charge of facilities. Nobody would ever known that was there. Every, really? every night. Mm -hmm. And did some did something similar happen at Whaley Elementary? Is what they said? No? But the question is, in 30 years' time, it never got cold enough before? They've had problems in that classroom before, but it's the piping under the unit itself where you could just slide the front covers off and see the problem right there. This is in the wall behind that problem area. Very poor design because the cold air return is facing due west right where the strongest winter winds blow in there. Can blow right into the back side of that unit. Terrible idea. They should have somehow moved it around to the side, maybe facing where the school buses or the parking lot maybe or something like that. I told I told Janet and I said, you people ought to really seriously think about come wintertime, getting a piece of um, coated foam, styrofoam yeah, yeah, fixed yeah. up. Yeah. Hold that whole area off right there. Just to keep this yeah. from happening again. Good. Granted, it's going to you're going to interrupt your fresh air intake into the classroom because yeah. that's the only way it's got right. to come in there. But it's going to prevent a lot of freezing problems in the future too. I mean, it's just just a poor design. Yeah. You could do something from the inside to allow some air from the building to get into the spot. Does it make sense that it hadn't happened before? No, the yep. 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 Now that the pipe's older, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So in the first 10 years of a pipe's life, it could take the 90-year winds and the 90-per-mile wind. But now that the pipe's older, does that we does that weaken it? Yeah. That, that you think it happened race, now yes. and hasn't yeah. happened in the past? It may have frozen in the past, and they just never know, noticed it, but it never ruptured. Right. So now, like you said, maybe the pipes have gotten weak in 30 years, and then it froze up again this time and weakened the pipe enough to rupture. I mean, who will ever know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Jerry said it was like a, a sauna in there. Oh, it was. It was. I mean, I mean the funniest part of it all was it wasn't the alarms in the classroom went off. It was in that bathroom in that classroom. They had the door open to the bathroom and more steam congregated in that room. That's when it touched the alarm. Oh. I guess they never knew they had a problem until the fire alarm went off. Because there was people in the building. Yeah. Janet, yeah. the other part-time janitor yeah, was, 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 yeah. was in here working. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thing you can't plan for, I guess. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, and I just want to publicly commend Bruce because he's really he was been on top he, was, of it since. he was not available when we first called him, but he was on his way back from Greenfield. As soon as he got home, he yeah. came. As we were leaving, he's he was very coming. Very dedicated to the school. Yeah. yeah. He was Johnny on the spot. I imagine he spent most of the night here. Yeah. So that's never a boring moment. <laughs> well, I'm glad you were here to help us understand more about what happened. Right, because he was here that night. Yeah. It was a cold evening, so it was really cold that night. It was down below zero. Well, I hear we got a warm up trend coming. I heard that, yeah. It may be good, it may be not so good if we got more frozen plates. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. So, are we on to the superintendent's report? Yeah. Sure. Thank you. My um, my report won't won't take long. I just wanted to talk about um, the uh, special education um, strategic plan task force that we have going on. It was part of my um, original uh, goals for the year, and it really wasn't fleshed out in the, in the goals, um, as a lot of the goals weren't. But um, I really wanted to, uh, to explain what it was about. Uh, this is a document that was actually written by Karen Ferrandino and Sharon Jones, um, our uh, curriculum uh, uh, facilitator uh, from the collaborative who's helping to facilitate these meetings and what these meetings are doing is what uh, it's a district-wide it's 
it's actually five school wide all the schools um, educators from each of the schools are coming together uh, sometimes during early release time sometimes just um, after uh, you know after school or having an afternoon of work and they've met four times uh, in as a whole group but they've met many more times in, in focus groups and the focus groups are there's three uh, one is it's called RTI MTSS and that's multi-tiered systems of support so that's a focus group that is focusing on working um, with we're talking about including the students in the classroom all of them and not just having a student sitting there with an adult uh, an uh, IA or but actually including them in all the activities and how we reach all the needs of the students through a system of supports that are tiered to the needs of the student personalized uh, learning <coughs> and then a vertical alignment of inclusion services and that vertical alignment is when they when they go from pre-K into kindy and going up through and <coughs> the biggest of course transition going from here sixth grade over to um, frontier in seventh grade they want to continue the same system of supports and then the uh, the last one being um, parent engagement which is always a big thing when you're talking about uh, particularly um, special education services so what they're doing is they have 16 educators across five schools and they're hoping to have a strategic plan for special ed which is part of our overall district um, strategic plan we have curriculum assessment and then special ed and that's the strategic plan that was presented in october and they're hoping to have this plan that is part of our it's 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 a subcategory of the district strategic plan. They're hoping to have that ready in June. And they've been working really hard on it. And what they, their goal is, again, to close a divide, um, shifting our mindsets and educational practices to embrace the notion that we're all one system of support. So we don't really want to take and differentiate well, that child's in special ed, so that child needs this specific person or these specific <coughs> methods of teaching. We want to bring them all together for one system of support that would just that would just serve all the needs of the students. Uh, so this explains it, and we're excited about it. And we'll be coming back with the uh, the strategic plan that they do develop. Great. Thank you. Uh, do we have a collaborative report? No? Okay. And I don't have anything. Um, so are we on to budget talks or do we want to do public comment or do we want to do public comment after budget talks? <laughs> public just here to listen to the budget? We're just here to listen. All right, on with the budget. There are a couple more copies of the budget here if anyone would like one. So um, good evening. Um, this is our, our first glance at our FY19 um, budget. Um, it is not complete in that our narratives aren't uh, in there yet. But if we start at page one of 23, this is the page that we started last year, the student and staff data sheet. And on the left, we're looking at who we had in the building on October 1st, because that is what our foundation budget will be based on. So we had 138 students um, in the building on October 1st, with uh, 26 of them being on IEPs. So then I just take that and I project it forward. Kindergarten becomes first grade. So we're looking right now that we would have 123 children, but that's a little bit misleading because kindergarten, that seven, is only the pre-Ks that we know are coming up to kindergarten. We have not had kindergarten registration yet. Or when will that be, um, Mrs. Gordon? It's going on right now. It's going on right now. So as you as you get numbers, would you please sure. uh, let me know so that I can update this? Um, can you make any projections on that? Yeah. 
No, um, I, I, no, I, I, I'm pretty certain of six, but, um, I haven't gotten the, the census yet. Kim McCarthy, our early childhood coordinator, usually does that. But as I get numbers, I can keep updating the school committee in the and on the right hand side is our staff members how many um, FTEs or what we call full time equivalents and it, as you can see since last year's budget two positions have been added both were instructional <coughs> assistants and one was a tuition in student into our wings program and another was a pre K student that uh, required some more assistance than we had anticipated. Um, and on the bottom, you'll see our teaching credentials. So this is how many, uh, this is what our, our, our contract scale looks like. Uh, so we have three teachers with bachelor's degrees. We have no teachers with bachelor's plus 15. We have nine with master's. We have three with master's 15, two with master's plus 30, and six teachers with master's 45 or CAGS, which that is a, that's probably the largest number of any school that we have that many teachers that are that well educated, which means that we've got some very dedicated teachers here that are, are very vested in getting the most recent teaching practices, so we should be very proud of that. Um, page two of 23, this is our summary of changes where we go from where we were this year, FY18, the uh, Conway School budget, 1,844,700. That, I want to make clear, was the amount the town appropriated for us. Um, to that, we need to add two point, uh, our, our collective bargaining agreement at 2.5% cost is 27446 We have teachers NIAs that still are <coughs> stepping on the contract, and that was 10259 We had two degree changes that cost 2978 we are putting money for a non-union increase, 5668 uh, There was a decrease due to new higher savings of about 7165 And we have an increase for a retirement buyback of 16195 That is a one-time cost of a teacher that retired that will not be recurring next year unless someone else does retire. Uh, the central office expenses increased 4323 uh, transportation, I'm expecting it to go above, um, um, to increase about 2000 It's based on a consumer price index and the December numbers haven't been released and I sort of projected based on what uh, September, October, November were all at 2.6. So I held December at 2.6 and came up with a percent increase of a 1.83, which would mean a $2,000 increase for Conway. Our SPED transportation is going to increase about $3,600. And our, the only decrease we have in, is our technology costs are going down about 4380 for a total change of $60,924 for a total request to the town of 1905624 which is a 3.3% increase. Um, the next few pages, uh, pages three. I just, I just a, st a straightforward question right there, Patty. Sure. How, how confident are you of those numbers, right, like changing or or staying the same? Well, uh, like, apps, are there any state funding decisions uh, that could well, impact we, any of those well, big numbers? We have not seen, we have seen nothing from the governor. The transportation number could change. Um, the increase, um, the health insurance number could change. Uh, your share of the central office health insurance could change because when we uh, did the calculations, we didn't have the exact percentage, and now we do. That was voted last Wednesday, so I have to go back and, and see how close my calculations are. So we could have some wiggle room uh, here of a change here or there, but I would think overall, I would say I'm 89% confident that we're in the ballpark. 89%? 89. This unusual degree of numerical specificity. <laughs> well, that's how I am. <laughs> you ask a question, I'm going to give you an answer. So pages 3 through um, 11 are the detail of the, of the numbers that we just looked at on page 2. Um, and you can look at that at your leisure. Starting on page 12, this is all our funds. <clears throat> so our, the first column here is the FY19 proposed budget that we looked at. 
And then the second column would be our use of school choice funds, our use of early childhood revolving funds, our use of um, SPED revolving funds, and the allocation of the 94-142 grant that we get. And if you look at page 14, you can see mostly we're, we're staffing. We're using that money for staff. School choice, we're putting uh, most of our instructional assistance there. The early childhood is uh, offsets a piece of our, uh, our pre-K teacher's salary. Uh, the SPED revolving um, pays for the teachers, uh, a little bit of speech. Um, the, they also have an allowance for substitute teachers, their IAs and their program. Uh, they also, on the next page, use some money for professional development because they need to be uh, trained in restraint training. They use about $2,500 in, in instructional materials and supplies. They use about $1,500 for field trips. Um, and if you, that is, so if you go to the end of page 20 of 23, you can see that of the total budget of $2,380,003, which is 100%, we're asking for the, the town to fund 80% of that budget. Um, the other thing I do like about this sheet is that it, it, it tells a, a more complete story about how we're spending our money. So if you look just at, um, if you look looking at just what we asked the town for, you would think that we're paying um, our teachers $623,241 when actuality we're, our total teaching cost for classroom teachers is $773,200. So this gives us a, a better view um, of, of what we're actually spending in the building. Um, page 21 um, is school choice. I can take the circuit breaker out of there because we never get any of that money. Um, so, um, Last year was the first year, or I, I should say this year, because we're still in this year. Um, we always spent the money a year in arrears, but we were at the point where we needed to spend not just the prior year, but a little bit of this year's. Um, and our projected revenue was actually lower, came in lower than what we had anticipated. So we're, we will be starting the year um, at a negative 50472 but cash-wise the money is there. It's not a negative. Um, the FY17 revenue that we know we're getting is 213625 and we're going to be using 180981 So we'll be 17828 of 19's revenue. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the next page is our, our SPED revolving, and this is the WINGS program. So um, again, we, had, um, we, we started a little lower than we thought we were going to with our beginning balance, but our revenue has shot up, um, and our expenses has stayed uh, pretty close. Um, the difference is uh, one of the IAs that we talked about on page one. So we're projecting the ending balance to be 97,808. Our tuition is going to be significantly lower next year right now because we have three students that are matriculating um, because they are sixth graders. We will of course be hoping that we will get some um, spots filled, but I like to be conservative in my revenue projections. Um, so with that said, we would be losing an instructional aid um, from this program, um, and we would have about 15,388 left. Um, now, even though we're eliminating the um, IA from the WINGS program, we did, that is what causes the school choice because we need to keep that IA on staff with us because uh, one of our school choice students um, came with some needs that we were unaware of. And to keep him um, or her, um, we're gonna need that IA's help in the uh, fifth and sixth grade next year. So we are just going to move the funding from the WINGS program into the school choice program. Doesn't that get paid by the district sending the kid? It will, and that's why I put it on the school choice, Elaine. Uh, excellent question, because 
um, we'll get that money back. We will bill that because we will get the SPED increment. Uh, when you have a child uh, accepted in the school choice program and they become um, special ed needs, their transportation costs, uh, their, the cost of an IA, uh, there's a grid that you put their numbers through and then we bill for that. So that's why I'm saying we're going to be upside down, but we'll probably, that number doesn't include the SPED increment we're going to ask for in June. Yeah. Usually a year delayed, right? Yes. Yeah. How many students did we have come into Wings from out of district this year? Just out of curiosity. I have that. Just let me dig it out. Okay. Yeah. Nine, six. Seven. Seven. <coughs> Wait, hang on. Let me see. Let me see who's listed here because we just brought two in. One, five, six, seven. So there was seven and <coughs> one, two, three, and four Conway students. Seven out of district and four Conway. I remember last year, we at this time we were talking about it, we were losing a lot, and it was like just the programs never not taking referrals. In. This is just. We're in the Further system. justification, it's a, it's a very good program. Districts like sending children here and it's revenue. Mm -hmm. So, and, we, and, and uh, Dr. Carey and um, Mrs. Gordon and myself had a conversation with uh, Ms. Ferrandino, our SPED director today, and she feels confident that she's going to get at least two placements. Mm -hmm. But um, from a financial standpoint, I don't like to put that pressure right. <laughs> on her. But it, it's just, it just happens every year. So right, that the kids just, come. We yes. find that we find the students right. take the slots. Mm -hmm. You're correct. Right. So there's. Uh, I was just curious. The on uh, 20 of 23, the total, the the number of the percentage of the total budget that's paid for by the state and federal governments. That we're well, that's a different story. That doesn't reflect that on 20 of 23 in the first column, FY19 proposed at the bottom. On 20 of 23, let's see. Let's see. Oh, column one, that, that's what we asked the town for. And then, right. but that's not what the town will get in Chapter 70 funding. That that hasn't been, um, that's not, hasn't been released. The governor's budget hasn't been released. So I don't know. The town would get Chapter 70 funding to support that 1905 but I don't know what that number is at this moment. We won't know until the governor's budget comes out. You know what last year's was? I don't off the top of my head, Mr. Baker, I'm sorry. Last year the percentage was 21%, I know that. And it's been, 1976 it was 41%, and it's been in a straight line going down, the percentage of our total education expense paid for by the state and federal government. And it's a straight line. And but with that said, they've also had a provision called the hold harmless. So we haven't decreased either. So they, they the the whole held the hold harmless is what's kept kept us even. Um, so I think we need to also be thankful that they haven't. I agree, more money should be put towards education. But I'm just saying they they have a hold harmless provision. So we haven't been as significantly hurt as we could have been. So questions about, are you done with your presentation? I am. Okay. Questions? Well, I have a question. The uh, ESSA becomes, it goes into effect this coming August. The what does? ESSA. Massachusetts has an ESSA plan that was, that this back to October was approved by the U.S. Department of Education, which is, replaces NLCB, NCLB with it. So uh, have there, is there any, any thought about how that could potentially shift the allocation of funds within this budget? Well, this year we lost our Title I funding here at Conway. This is the first year we did not qualify for any. So of the five schools in our um, frontier and the union, um, there are now two schools who don't qualify for Title I, which was what is what ESSA is, um, and that is Conway and Waitley. Um, and, and, and Waitley hasn't had Title I money since I've been here, so that's almost six years. And Why this did we lose it? Because we don't, because they, because of the free and reduced population, we are, we just don't have enough free and reduced um, population. So I don't see that. I don't. I don't see that. Um, Essa, if I'm, if I, I think I'm right. Essa is title what uh, the re the re title. We call it title one for funding, but it's there. That's the new name. For Essa it. Essa is um, the regulations and. Um, 
No Child Left Behind brought in all the assessments, and now we're having ESSA, and it's really more um, academic uh, with a bent to that. For instance, we're a level one school in Conway, which is excellent, but the levels in Massachusetts are going away. They're going to find a different other ways and other means to um, assess the uh, success of the school. Mm -hmm. uh, a school, then. <laughs> yes, right. Mm -hmm. they, they, they'll have other ways of, of, of rating mm -hmm. us, if they're going to rate us. And the assessments are uh, different. They're, um, they're not going to be, uh, now we're in MCAS 2, and the way they're rating those are different. They, they're finding a, a different uh, kind of a midpoint and how they're judging that. It, it has a lot to do with accountability and assessment yeah. and it's the score centric too, right? right? Yes, there. So that's why I was, maybe you have to spend more money on, on purchasing new testing materials or things of that nature. Is that possible? No, no. We, yeah, we we use two types of testing right now: uh, the NWEA and what's the other one that we use? Ames Web. Ames oh. Web. And, and but we've used them right along. MCAS is free though. They're requiring us to do it, so they. And it's now it's online, so now they, they do it on computers. And the technology has been very well supported by Conway, um, by the school committee and the taxpayers, so that there's enough computers to go around so the students can take the test online. But we have district determined measures within this school, and those are, it's called um, Measures of Academic Progress, which is Northwest Educational Association, NWEA. And so that's how inside the school, the teachers, uh, they can use those scores. For instance, next month, the person's going to come back with scores. They're going to determine, um, are the children making growth? Where are the weaknesses? How do we personalize the learning? And where do we get those multi-tiered systems of support? Um, those tests are done within. And a lot of the ESSA is really about that kind of, um, that kind of, uh, assessment and teaching Common Core. Are they still going to are they going to stay with Common Core? Are they going to use a different way of teaching? So it's a lot of the requirements for the academic piece. Title One is an entitlement grant, um, as, as well as Title Two, and, and, and Title Two is a professional development grant. Then we have uh, Read, which is rule, uh, you know, the, the rule uh, uh, grants that we get. We, so those are entitlement grants. The problem is, is that's to help equalize, say, uh, socioeconomic, you know, districts that are lower than some others to make them equalized. And unfortunately, Conway, although you get Title Two A, you do get Title Two A for professional development, but you don't <coughs> get it for Title One, which would be money to help help students that are. Um, socially, uh, social economically dis disadvantaged. What a great question though, because a lot of these um, come with unfunded mandates, yeah. right? They say, so that's yeah. a great forward thinking yeah. question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, quick follow, the uh, special education task force, mm -hmm. when do you expect to complete and uh, release your initial recommendations or study? Well, they're hoping to have the plan, the strategic plan, um, submitted to me by June okay. and uh, but they're working hard at it I I attended a meeting this um, this very week about uh, the uh, multi-tiered systems of support and they're really working hard on it they're dedicated they've, they've got a vision statement they've got a plan and uh, it is and, and the goal is someday to be able to as we encompass all students that maybe we won't you know, need as much instruction to, you know, we're all, but right now they're, they're really working hard on helping us identify how can we meet the needs of all students, not only struggling students, but students that need enrichment. And it's one system from enrichment all the way down to the students that need that support to keep up. So we're hoping uh, by June. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? I have one. It's not. <clears throat> it's not to do with the budget. That's um, even better. I it's, it's due to last year's budget. This last year, town and county appropriated, I think it was thirty-four thousand to upgrade our phone and intercom systems. Yes. 
and I understand as of today it has not been completed yet. That's Do you right. know what the status of that is? So we Did I actually put you up to this. We <laughs> we started a, a new system using a new system when the central office moved into um, the high school. And it's it's using VoIP, voice over internet protocol rather than our hard lines. And there were some issues that needed to be worked out. Um, and so our director of technology, Scott Paul, um, was trying to work out those kinks because Waitley also uh, had funded money. Mm -hmm. So Waitley, um, we're the guinea pigs, and the second system is Waitley. And then I don't know the schedule for the second and third, but I know Conway's in there and Deerfield. Everybody put money in. Mm -hmm. So we're, we, we don't want to... We're trying to do this very methodic, slowly and methodically, and we're doing it ourselves. We're, we're not going out and getting a vendor. Scott is piecing these things together by himself um, so that we can get the best price. So Waitley is being done first. We're gonna see how that works, and then we're gonna move on to the next school. So are you talking about the intercom? Intercom yeah. slash yeah. phone. So the intercom is, the parts are ordered, the PO is written for the work, uh, the call again yesterday, the parts I believe have actually been delivered to the vendor that's coming to fix the intercom. And I'm telling you, I'm, it's got to start next week. Hands oh. down, it's got to start. And, and they are actually the first one in the, in the district to get the, the intercom. But the intercom, the reason it took us a long time to get the vendors here to scope out, we had two or three ben vendors so that we could get some, you know, bids. But the phone system has to, you know, uh, to it has to combine and, and uh, multifunction with the intercom system. Mm -hmm. Now we had actually Kristen had someone in here in the summer, and they paid a couple thousand or something to fix the intercom. So at that point we thought, well, the intercom's good for a while, but that fix didn't. Didn't mm -hmm. work. So we've had a couple of vendors come and look, but they had to meet not only with Bob Lesko, but they had to meet with Scott Paul because of the technology piece with the phones. They just have to, um, they have to combine, um, coordinate. So we're not changing the phone system here. We're just fixing the intercom. I think we're upgrading. Which is, diff the which is different too. than Waitley because we're changing the phone system there. I think they're fixed so that the phones, they can call one another. The phones aren't working. Mm -mm. I understand I neither one will work at yeah. this point. So anyway. Because I think that was, yeah. of, uh, I the heard P it. Yeah. Oh, so the P a conversation yeah. after the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. That's the P.O. The there's lack of communication between yeah. the front office right. and anywhere up, 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 up. Well, the because they, the teachers and stuff. it wasn't like, it was because they had a yell. And so when you got to this corner, you know when you when you stopped at um, there's a bend in the school yeah they didn't hear the they didn't hear the yell so it wasn't for teachers la you know like lack of community staff lack of community she just couldn't hear and if someone had their door shut they really couldn't hear someone yelling well if there's a person of uh, yes that's caused this lockdown that happened to be out in the corridor right that would be disastrous we call that an evil door there was an evil door in the school and it is a problem and the safety is mm -hmm. at risk mm -hmm. So what, the PO was written in December. Okay. Just so you know, that means that we ordered the work mm -hmm. in December. We oh. finally got the bid. They pinned down whatever wires and cords and systems and you know um, combination thing that they need to do with the server, with the technology <coughs> person, and Bob Lesko. That was. Then we waited for them to order the the parts. The parts, as far as I know, are in. And again i'm going to try again to contact I, I believe it's going to start this week we were promised the, it'll take three days to do the work will be done by january 31st right and that's what we were told a month ago and we were just hoping it well, would come like sooner a lot of projects they get delayed down the road for one reason or the other but right. but this one is more important even than waitley waitley will come after this one and then we're off to deerfield mm -hmm. but this school is the one this is the one where the, the intercom is just not working. The intercom system is not working at all. And the other schools, they can get by, but this is the school that's been important. And we've really have been 
working on it, but it was coordinating to get the different bids in and getting Scott and Bob and the, you know the vendors. And, but there's no excuse, and I, I, I accept that. Uh, there's no excuse the safety well, of the students. You're only relying on what the vendors are talking about. Mm -hmm. So okay. You gotta rely on them, you know. Right. We'll hope for I January thirty first. We were, oh, I think this yeah. is a relatively new phone system. I think no. it, it was put in like a year or two before I got here. The phone system. The phone. I remember phone redoing the phone. System. The phone. The phones are new. The intercom is not. Right. Yeah. right. So they put in a new phone system, but Sorry. they didn't replace the intercom at the right. same time. Yeah. So Sorry. if the phone, but the intercom needs to work in conjunction. Right. With, with the phone. Right. So it's. Um, I'm glad to hear that it's in the works. Thank you. We'll get there. Okay. You're good. It's been in the works for, yeah. but it's frustrating, and it's I'm it's sure. very frustrating, and not for, um, Kristen putting it on the back burner because Kristen has not put it on the back burner. <laughs> and Luckily, she's got a loud voice; she can yell down the hallway. She, and she sends yeah. emails all the time. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, "Come on, this is important." And then and then we had the um, some support from the teachers in the union that this is important it's on everyone's mind and it, it's just there's no excuse thank you so if i could just piggyback just on what he so that 30 the the intercom was part of last year's town meeting uh capital request that we asked to take out of our fund out of yes. the capital yep. special cut so uh, there's been a capital request now for years in a row um so July this one. is the first of what time we've requested to take money out. Every year we request to put, put money fifty thousand in. in. This is the first time we've requested to take money out. So will there be another request this year? We've been what requesting the fifty thousand dollars every year. Yeah, I know. There is going to be one. Uh, it's the be water the well. Yeah. The water and the lining of the water tank. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom's taking care of that. Last night we talked about that. The was done. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tom's taking care of that. So they're going to yeah. line the well and they're going to give you something new to DP yeah. requiring the school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Public water supply. So rules. that's going to take that's going to take um, precedent over anything else that needs to be done. Yeah. Did you see that water tank? Like, there's no getting that out. It's been cement. It's literally getting cement. I don't know how they're going to line that thing. You can't get it out. You can't even get barely get in there. It's the craziest thing. Well, they, Cement they, is they, all around it. They, they, <laughs> maybe have to be before, before they put the floor on, they put the tank in, and then they can fill up from there. Yeah, that's crazy. So, any more questions about the budget? The yeah. audit. The audit. Well, uh, I think two years ago we had an audit by Rosselli and Clark. Are they due for an audit for this coming fiscal year nineteen, Patty? Um, it shouldn't. When I when I came aboard, um, not all the towns got audited every year. Every so year. Um, I did speak with um, the head of the finance, and he says as long as each school does one every three years, um, the smaller towns, as long as they do an audit on the end of the year report every three years, he would be fine with that. So um, I think I, I think we've got one more year before we hit the third year again. Um, one is, that looks like on page 17, food services is only 4000 Is there, am I missing? So food ser uh, the food service is a revolving fund, and it should um, it should be a self sustaining fund. But that has been a systemic That's problem. Theoretical. <laughs> it's a systemic problem. But we've all been losing money in all five schools. So what we had proposed this year was to share a food service director. So we're bringing that piece onto the budget so that we keep it out of the fund. So hopefully we can have a positive cash flow in the fund. So that's why you're only seeing. Um, Conway's share of the district food service director. So, does that mean, so what is our total cost to feed our students? Do they pay for their meals? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, some do, some don't. Okay. What's They're our, supposed how to. How is our collection, uh, what's the percentage of our getting our money back out of the parents? Better than so last year. It's probably, probably better than some of the schools, but probably not 100 percent, is it? It's not 100 percent, but uh, I'll tell you, Kristen um, has done a great job sending out letters. I've I've spoken to parents. I, I I tell Kristen when it gets to a point where you feel like you can't get anywhere, let me call. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't find that these parents are unwilling to pay. They're, it's not they're they're not intentionally trying not to pay 
if they're having difficulty paying, they've had mm -hmm. you know financial situations yeah. which are no, preventing them. That. Um, and so at that case, I tried to tell them to stay current and then maybe give us ten dollars on on the back on the back end. Um, but since three years ago, the law changed and the um, food service cannot be in the deficit or it would affect the town's free cash. So if we're short, if we lose money, if the program has a loss and whatever the balance is owed by parents at the end of the year, it's been coming out of the general fund budget and putting been put into the uh, food service program. Um, so we're hoping that with this turnaround plan that we've been using, that we will at least be at a break-even point. And if not, then I'm going to suggest our our 20 budget, our, our fiscal year 20 budget, include a provision uh, for bad debt or loss, um, so that it's budgeted and we're not looking to spend it at the end of the year. I don't. I didn't bring I think the it's figures. Been in. Around, I think it was like two, what, two or three, twenty-five hundred last year or something. I think we got it down to seventeen. Yeah. And that's what the school is indebted to the food service for, because it's just in the budget. Mm -hmm. That's what we right, haven't so collected. We have, right. So Are we, we any closer to getting the Meals Plus program up and running so that people, parents can? It is. And that's why Kristen thinks it's been doing bad. Well, okay. So the online. I don't pay my bill until I get a bill. So the Because I have no idea what's going on half the time. The online piece <laughs> is, is taking a little bit longer. And Dr. Carey and I have to meet with the four town administrators because it's four separate bank accounts because each town is its own financial institution. So I need permission from four different treasurers to take online payments. Will they go through yeah. that UNA, whatever? Uh, whatever that we'd have to, that's what I'm saying. Each school would have to go know, through whatever, so what, whatever. If, if I, I do believe Conway uses Unibank. Yeah. So we would have to go, we'd talk to Tom to talk to Jan Warner to see if we are, could be allowed to take online payments. So we haven't gotten to that point. Um, I'm hoping February or March, Dr. Carey and I can put that on our um, agenda to talk to the uh, town administrators about that. When um, you're going to meet them up about budgets, put that in the conversation, right? Well, that it would that would be cost. For, that's more of a cost to the parent, and yeah. and that's one of the drawbacks. Um, in one of the districts that I was in previously, we implemented it, and the parents didn't use it because they didn't want to pay the fee. Right, it's like twenty five cents or something. And it's a little higher than that on this one, yeah. um, and, and well, that's the other thing. So, <laughs> if okay, so, if we use the one that comes with the program. There can only be one bank account, and I don't think we're going to get the four towns to agree to that. So then, so then, what happens is we'll be able to do take online payments in each town, but then we lose the functionality of Ashley being able to go on to see that her child ate, you know, the mac and cheese with the chicken nuggets or what they actually ate. We'll lose that. That won't. We'll lose that capabilities. I don't so care what they eat. I just want to be able to pay you. <laughs> so it's let the meat cake. You know what I mean? It's six of one half. I, I really another. don't. Yeah, I, I'm like, oh yeah, I owe some money. Let's send it in. But and there's also been a discrepancy <clears throat> on if I pack one lunch, I pack two. You know what I mean? Like yeah. But that my, doesn't. The, there's a huge discrepancy, be, and it's not. It can't just be a milk. But actually, that happens. But this is what, what when I talk to these parents. Though, this is what I hear. I send my child with a lunch. But our policy is to feed him. So if he gets in the line, whether you sent him with a lunch or not, we don't know that. We feed him. You can't refuse That's, not yeah. to feed him. Boy, right. it's Friday yeah. morning. So he's very either I'll tossing the lunch. I'm not keeping track. It doesn't matter. They're tossing whatever, the lunch. But they're eating yeah. it. Yeah. I don't say it so like I don't know. know. If he's an entrepreneur, he's still selling it. Somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you what know? I hear when I call these parents yeah, and say you owe this money. They say, but I send my kid with the lunch. Well, they're not eating it and they're getting in line, or they're. They're eating it on the bus for breakfast and they're right. getting in line.
can't refuse them. I, we can't. Re that's your policy for us yeah, not to refuse the kids. No, your kids aren't doing that. But. Uh, yeah, that is yeah, our policy. You <laughs> are correct. <laughs> yeah. Feed them if they show up in line. Absolutely. And, and the only thing is, I mean, what do we put? Put a guard at the front door. Did you Did you bring your lunch? Are you no, no. Lunch? I just want to be able to go online, see my kids ate lunch, and pay my bills. This school yeah. small enough that we know if. I mean, Gail, you're in there. You know whether kids brought, and they're not really buying too. But um, sometimes Ash too. Um, because, yeah, we need to take a look at it because your discrepancy is a little high. But sometimes a parent will send in money with one child, and maybe it only gets credited to that one child while the other one keeps adding up. So we, we need to take a look. And then we got to look at the siblings because, I mean, how many calls did I make you last yeah, year when I was trying to reconcile? I'd be calling saying, is, you know, is, uh, is Kevin Campbell related to Anita Campbell? Because Kevin's got too much money and Anita right. has none. Right. Yes, they're That's siblings. It's fine that I'm transferring the funds. Right, Patty did well, and that. Well, yeah. Clayton comes from my house half the week and Christina's yeah. house half the week. And, yeah. you know, I, he usually makes a lunch, but yeah. I don't know if he does there or not. Yeah. Yeah. So who knows? Right. But right. to me, then you just put the bill. Out. Right. You know, because right. who can keep track? So to answer your question, the last year we paid for two years. And uh, the two years, bad debt and loss was $18,316 kids eat a lot in Conway. How much was it? 18316 but, but that was but two that years. Wasn't, that wasn't kids not paying for lunch. That was both kids not paying for lunch, or parents not paying for lunch, <coughs> kids, it was parents not paying for lunch, and how much the program lost. Right. That was a bigger part. Yeah. But did that we just really raised the lunch cost last year because we were and below we, the federal and we were, we need to number. Yeah, the number FDA number school lunch reimbursement. And we're not dollar. allowed to be. But that's part of the whole thing because when they set up the, the school lunch program in the 70s, if they would have kept track just with inflation, the reimbursement would now be over $6 per school lunch. But that's another thing that, another that the percentage of reimbursement right. is going. And, and so the costs haven't gone down. And so the basic, at some point you reach like a basic <coughs> ethical, like it's just unethical to actually expect the program to break even. Yeah. And we're not quite there yet. But that's where it's headed. Where we you can't you can't provide help you, you can't feed when, kids and as the percentage of reimbursement every year keeps them. going and the percentage of costs keeps going this way, at some point soon, it's going to be like we just can't uh, like healthy offer healthy feed, meals and and you know, we may have to and we may have to I've, I've just made a note to talk to Mary um, to see if we've gotten the notification of what they will be re re reimbursing us for a free meal. If we might have to raise our prices for FY19 again, if not 19, definitely for 20. Because we can't charge less than they give us. But Bob, several, you know, I, there are a couple people that are in this position where, I mean, some families, if someone takes on, literally a family that took on five extra hours of work they and it lunch. booted them off the free lunch, <coughs> you know? And, so and, then that, not. and then that bill gets real hard because you're only, you know, let's say you're working for fifteen dollars an hour. It's only an extra seven. It's, they, yeah, it's it's. It's the one thing we could give to the kids, you know. And, and well, just so you know, I have grandchildren at this school. I have grandchildren at Frontier Regional, and all sets of the grandchildren bring them back good reports about the lunch programs okay. and Frontier is much better than it used to be. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. Thank you. That's success. Reports I'm my grandchildren. There you go. And can I just ask one more question? Um, what is other instructional hardware and what is the 20000 in other expenses? What page do you want? Uh, sorry, 16. 16? Yeah. So we have to have a chart of accounts that aligns with Desi, and Desi's redoing all their hardware accounts. So, so we are too. So last year they were budgeted. Um, so other instructional hardware, that's going to be the one-to-one -one devices. Computers. Um, so for so the kids to take the test, and if that compared to what was the other question? Just in in other instructional hardware, it just says other expenses. So I was wondering what that 20000 Well, see, and that, I always put it, because I, it's, all right, it's definitely not a, con well, it could be a contract service if we lease it. Um, I don't know if Dusty wants to consider it a, a, a supplier or material, so I throw in other expenses until they will clarify for me 
do where they want it. But you're saying that 20,000 is in computers. Computers, oh, yeah. smart yeah. boards, anything with technology. And is that so is that something we are we buying or rent you're saying we're so what, what's our, our technology director is Scott Paul, and he's been here uh, for five years now. And what he did is he went through and did uh, an extensive inventory of all, the, all five schools for hardware. And then he did the same thing for software. And what he's saying is he has a certain number of investment um, that Conway has invested in their technology. And he divides that by five and saying we need to replace one fifth every year. So that's what that 20,000, it represents one fifth of the investment of technology because that with changes and with things breaking. And then we make, and then we have to make those. Do we want to lease a Chromebook? Does it make it more sense for us to lease it or buy it? Okay. Um, and with the Chromebooks, it's been more, it's been more advantageous for us to buy them. But if teachers so need new laptops, it's been more advantageous for us to lease those. So that's just a standing, you expect to see that over every budget year, yes. just as a maintenance cost. Of Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, on page 23, the enrollment of Conway is at 142, and on page 1, October 1st enrollment, is at 138. Who picked up my page? We both said October 1st. I just oh. wonder which one was I don't think we can count um, pre K students in mm -hmm. October. No, they're both 138. Is that 138 and 138? I saw one that said 141. So um, I'm under Union 2018. It says Conway 138, and that ties out to my page one, which is 138. There was somewhere else I saw. So where you, I saw 2017 says 142. Yeah. 2018 says 138. 138. Yeah. It's projected. The real question is, how many kids, whether it's 138 or 142, how many kids are from town? Do, do we have, do we have the enrollment? Do you vote school yeah, choice right school there? School choice. Okay, so uh, school choice, um, 35 students are school choice, 35. And then they're doing K to 6? Yes. Not preschool. You can't do, you can't do it for preschool. Right, I'm just saying, so K to 6. There's 35 school choice students. So about 103 to 107 kids from town. Yep. You know. That's why I saw it. More it's questions? The uh, collective bargaining, uh, when did that start? When are you looking at the next contract? It's up to Dr. Curry, do you know how they, next uh, year? he's asking next if year. the union has given us notification that they want to start negotiating yet on the next contract? Are they? Not yet, no. This will be our 20th, the, uh, right. Right, this is the, 19 is the last year that we have a contract. Stay tuned. Thank you. Yep. So there's another year. But we usually, usually they send us the notification of when they want to start to bargain, but we haven't received that yet. Still a wait though. We'll be here sooner than we know. Yeah. Any other questions? So we digest this and we discuss it again next meeting, is that correct? So in February, we're hoping we're, what we're going to be doing, um, we've been trying to, uh, you know, try to expand the budget every year since I've been here. And um, with Dr. Carey coming, um, last year we added her staff and data page, which I really love. Um, this year, Dr. Carey wants to do some, uh, do a PowerPoint, so, and, and add more narratives. Have a narrative, not just my narrative of how the money changed, but a narrative <coughs> from the principals about what's happening in their school buildings. And she would like to expand her oh, message. I feel very happy. Yes, and, it, and she'd like to expand hers. So in February, we're hoping that we'll have more detail, of verbal, de verbal and both picture in our PowerPoint presentation, awesome. which we would then use that PowerPoint presentation when the town calls us to present to them. Awesome. Uh, I am going to offer up a correction on your first introductory sentence, though, because I believe you are not looking to expand the budget every year. You're looking to expand your budget reporting and transparency. Yes, sir. So, I, I heard that, too. 
the, uh, the goal is the but the budget does expand every year just out of well, the overall goal though is to to make it clear from so many different angles that the questions continue to come and that people really understand what what is making it, it tick what's making the uh, the changes uh, every year last year we asked for 50,000 more this year preliminary before the deliberations we're asking for 60,000 more but the, the idea is to give as much information so that that triggers more questions and then helps us explain even more I think when I was first on school committee in like 1998 I think my first round and the budget was done in a much more like let's put some money here put some money there and there was like really no transparency we'll have a contingency fund here and and it was just bad I mean it it made sense the way budgets were done then in terms of you know there was a little rainy day fund stuck around here but there was no transparency well, you know and that's interesting all. 1998 is the year that I came into schools and that is when um, it was like right at the beginning of ed reform and Desi was giving money out hand over fist to all the schools so they were just doing their budgets if, if Desi gave them 10% more they would just take their budgets and say okay you got 10% more and, right. and and then I think it was 1999 or 2000 when the rubber hit the road and the funds stopped flowing as Phil was saying and then those big 10% increases became to began to flatline yeah isn't it true that the Really, there's no city or town that's at the level of funding, state funding, purchasing power since 03. I think that's correct. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that statistic. That level of funding. Well, I like, I really like understanding what every line is and that you yeah, can ask questions tough. and get answers yeah. about what, so people understand that this isn't about, you know, us, you know, putting money here or right. there or whatever. It's really about creating the best school for our kids to, you know, get the best education Thank that you. they can. So really I'm also I'm, not, I'm also not afraid to say, I don't know, I gotta go check on that for you. Right. <laughs> right. right. But it's also about having the dialogue between Finance Committee Select Board yeah. and yeah. this is the place to do it. And the uh, town meeting floor is a really difficult place to have a, a dialogue. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, you know, study the stuff, bring up your questions. It's the administrator's burden to, you know, justify well, tax dollars spent. Well, people should be incredibly proud of the school. I mean, they have funded the school appropriately. Our kids do get a great education here, no matter what yes. type of learner they are. I can speak to that from both my kids. Very different learners who have thrived here, you know, and, you know, we do well by every kid, I think. You know, uh, so you know it shows, but we need to represent that too, and not just, you know, get caught up sometimes in little details. Do you guys have, have thoughts about long-term planning with, like, the like younger population with children kind of declining in general in this area, and and how that will reflect future ability to keep the a great school. I think Lynn's been it. very active in the superintendent's discussions about regionalization and getting mm -hmm. together and all that, right? Well, let me tell you that the state would uh, love to see um, school unions like ours regionalized. Yeah. The problem is that's a change. And in my short tenure here, I've learned you have you just have to go slow to go fast. The people are not, they're, it's not that they're not willing, but it, there's just so many, you know, barriers to the final. In the end, we would save money by regionalizing, but not in the way that you would think. We'd still probably have the four schools because if we regionalize, that, that probably would be a contingency that each town would have a school at least for 10 years. Um, there's no guarantee that we can sustain the level that we have now in each and every school for 10 years. I can't speak for the towns and say yes, you know, but that would be a big burden to get across. And then, because we'd still probably have the same amount of teachers, probably, you know, the same amount of support, 
staff. However, You're saying if we regionalize. Well, if we regionalize and keep the schools, but the, the problem is, the beauty is if we regionalize, we can mesh our people together a lot better than we do now. So we can move people from building to building. We can do a lot more. Like right now we have specialists that are itinerant, but we can also <coughs> do you know, more things like that. Okay. It would cut down on the amount of work that is being done at central office. Central office is very complex. Uh, Patty's done five budgets. She's built five budgets this year, every year. And um, so many school committee meetings and so many things that are just repeated over and over again. Uh, so regionalization is probably eventually where you'll end up. I don't know, five years, I, I can't speak to it. I personally, <coughs> as superintendent here, I would recommend it and I'd love to do it but the towns they just have their own identity we're yankees of course i'm from chicopee so not not quite as yankee-ish more city-ish but the the yankee way of this is our town and this is us and we're that's pretty inbred that's pretty you know solid here and, a bunch uh, of years ago it was brought up that town yeah. meeting about centralization mm -hmm. but i mean if you're a superintendent people get out of the room of life <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're a superintendent it's not gonna happen. <laughs> one school you know the the for administration it's obviously stuff things like that are better is this one school meeting uh, is, yeah. you know instead of five school meetings a, a, a month and things like that and um, however, it really makes no sense. However, um, there's an economy of scale there, involved. There's a lot of uh, j just the the law requires that all four towns municipalities are equalized at uh, health insurance uh, mm -hmm. rates. So, Conway at 75 percent town contribution, 25 percent versus Sunderland at 50/50. So the not just school, but the whole. Mm -hmm. So so just that fix mm -hmm. is a mi you know millions of dollars. And that would and be if we had. That would be if we went with two regions because to go to go to a K to 12, not only would we have the health insurance, but then we have two different salary schedules: the frontier salary the schedule, right. and, yeah. and so we're that together, but we're not because there's right. Union 38 yeah. and so frontier. Do we do two regions, yeah, pre-K to advice. six region, and leave the seven alone, seven to 12 alone, and just create a new region, pre-K to six? So then we only have the insurance issue that would come up. And the flip side of that is we would get the transportation reimbursement for elementary schools that we now don't. Um, how, however, uh, in the past, the state has offered when they wanted someone to regionalize, they would, uh, they would, the legislature would make Bribe. A, would, would make a one-time payment uh, to equalize, you know, to put you on an equal footing so that you're starting at zero. And uh, we would require, in my humble opinion, we would require such a legislative action. Uh, because otherwise it makes no financial sense and um, and I mean you can't see can you see any elementary school in this district who says I don't want my elementary school all four towns because no of our town. regional they agreement. fight tooth and nail to keep their community school because their community school is the best community school well, it creates you know? a hardship on parents if their kids are going traveling like a distance hour yeah Right. Well, this school and Waitley are not that far apart. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean that. And, and just, Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield not. are all three miles from each other. Yeah. I mean, and, our and, our kids and when you in take first a look grade at it, it makes went no sense to, to have three when my kid was in first grade, they they went to Sunderland because what was the roof getting down or was that what happened? Yeah. 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 Right. So for half yeah. the first grade or part of the first grade. Mm -hmm we took our kids down to Sunderland School. I thought it was a great experience for them, you know, but <laughs> most people think it's terrifying to go to school, and, and that's a gorgeous school. We have gorgeous schools in the yeah. district in general. Yeah. They're beautiful schools, but everybody wants their community school. It's what you know, they, they, each, each they town has its own part, identity. The, the school yeah. is a huge part of the community. It is. Yeah. Every so, community. And we should fear the tyranny of the majority of Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley Gang. And, and, and all of us should. All the three towns should. I mean, if I get the no, seriously, no. seriously. <laughs> you so should. you're saying that phase one might just be sharing resources. Yeah. Yes. And there's an economy of scale that would yeah. be involved. Individual um, instruction, special education. Well. I mean, a principal in each school, you know, I mean, nothing against our principal. We want our principal, but, you know, I mean, the, and other administrators in each school, like, it's just like, that doesn't make logical sense in many ways. No, I would say the biggest, but none of us are going to give it up. The biggest wild card in all this is the, uh, the 
liberalization, if you will, of school choice and, 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 and uh, charter schools. I mean, uh, yeah, you might get kids coming in. The more we have a net inflow and outflow from school choice, but you, know, you have to hire more firm teaching positions. It's the burden on the town because then these teachers are going to be entitled to you know, health, edu health insurance and that kind of OPEP mm -hmm. longer term. So, I mean, you know, it's really not a long, it just, it just makes it a lot more, it makes planning a lot more onerous for that. Something you know, we have that same at issue at Frontier. But the, um, the OPEP liability, and it, there, and of course our regional agreement is so old, it doesn't address something like OPEP. Yeah. So there's no way to assess it to the towns because it, it, it's silent in the agreement. Yeah. Now school choice is um, not supposed to be an extra cost. So. It, Right. For, for next year when we do school choice openings, we'll look at a grade and we'll see how many kids are in, in that particular grade. And our school choice openings will be such that we don't have to hire any extra staff. So all, so it's not supposed to be an extra cost to the school. So when you get that money, it's the, the theory is then it's the extra money because you still have to eat the building, you still have to, you know, you still have the phys ed teacher, you still have the fourth grade teacher, and these three kids are not going to cause that to go up. That's the idea behind school choice. Anything else? Can I get a vote to adjourn? Uh, motion. Motion. Bill motion. and Ira. Second. 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 Second.